Hey everybody, welcome back to The Move, presented to you by Patron Tequila each and every day. Alongside my co-host J.B. Hager from Austin, Texas, and my main man George Hincapi, the Sonny to my share, the Jan to my Clody, the peanut butter to my chocolate. I've been thinking a lot about these. Oh, like, I got, I, I got it got for time? the rest of the tour. Oh, you got more? I got more. We talk about the chamois. Oh no, we'll talk about that later. No, though. we're going to talk about the chamois <laughs> taint later. Don't worry. Um, but we're talking about stage fifteen today from Mio, and it finishes in Carcassonne. We're not going to get that wrong anymore. Nope. <laughs> Our, my good friend Alain Azizi, actually a good friend of George's as well, has sent in the pronunciations of all the cities until the finish. Here it is. is. Here it is. One more time. Wait. Mio, and it finishes in Carcassonne. Mio to Carcassonne. One more time. Mio, and it finishes in Carcassonne. Carcassonne. <laughs> 181 kilometers, otherwise known as 113 miles. Two in a row for Team Astana. Pretty impressive. That means a lot to their program, does it not? Two well, stage wins? You know, these teams that are not in the individual classification game, I mean, to win one stage is a very big deal. To win two and two in a row is, is huge. I mean, people, super, people are going to be super excited now to go visit Kazakhstan, I think. <laughs> yeah, there was, and there, was, there was huge drama last year when uh, Aru decided uh, last minute to leave Astana. And turns out he's not even in the Tour de France right now. And now they're, they got two stage wins. So I think they're pretty happy with how the, their tour has gone so far. Yeah. Well, and I think George is the perfect person to break down how that win happened uh, for those who didn't get to see it today. Just a little bit of business before we let sure. George go on. Because I'm not talking about today because I was pretty bored and the Open was on, so I was watching Tiger make a great run. But before we get to George, today's show is brought to you, like every day, by High Brew Coffee, our good friends in Austin, Texas. Cold brew for those who do. All natural energy, two cups of coffee per can, six different flavors. You can head over to Amazon, get 20% off. Type in the, the coupon code there, 20THEMOVE. Sent right to your house. And you can also, as JB points out all the time, because I think he does this, these kinds of things, is you can set it up for like renewal, so it just keeps coming and coming and coming. You don't even have to think about it. You're not going to wake up one morning without any coffee. Cold it's brew for there. those who do. Two zero the move at Amazon. All right, so I appreciate your honesty that you were more engaged with the open this morning. <laughs> it really frustrates George. I mean, because we, we, we have to go back and forth, and so when they got cut to commercial on NBC, then I send it to the open and watch golf. And he's just, he was getting so frustrated. Now, you wouldn't be doing that if it was a more of a, I shouldn't say significant, a pivotal stage. No, in if the it tour. was Wednesday's stage, the 65 yeah. kilometer dynamic stage, of course, no, I would never switch. Right. No, we take our job seriously here at the move. But it was just, it was one of those stages, you call it, it was going to be a breakaway type yep. event. And George can break down what had happened, in particular, when that seven man break becomes a three man break. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think we should touch upon just looking, if you look at the profile today, you think until the end, it's kind of an insignificant profile. The riders are not thinking that. I mean, you're starting, it looks from the start up at one to two kilometer, seven to eight percent grade, straight down up at three, per, three kilometer, six percent grade, down and back up again. I mean, that is about as hard as it can possibly get to start like that at the Tour de France. There's, as you saw, the breakaway was 29 guys, but there's a lot more than that trying to make the breakaway. The directors are yelling in everybody's ear that has not won a stage, you better be in that breakaway. Yep. And there's a lot screaming. of pressure at this point. There's if a you ton, haven't of won pressure, yet, right? ton of pressure. Well, there's and a lot of these teams that are desperate. I mean, truly so desperate. Desperate to get in the breakaway, and then the GC guys are having to control it. So it's really, really, that first 50 kilometers today uh, must have been brutally hard. I, 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 we read or we saw that TJ was trying to be very aggressive, trying to get in the breakaway, which I hope bodes well for the Pyrenees days. Maybe he'll make a break and hopefully win a stage. Um, but what I was saying before uh, about the end, you know, these guys, 29 guys in the break, it whittles down to about, uh, I'd say, what, 10, as eight to 10 guys in the last 20K after the category one climb. So just think about all the work they put in, and then the last 7K becomes a chess match. Yeah, at about six k, six k, three guys peeled off, three and then guys the, peeled off. and then the, there's four guys staring at each other. It's really, well, the other hey, three guys. I mean, it's a bit of a lottery. I mean, oh, total lottery. I mean, it's not a lottery to be there, but at that point, at that point, you just have to time it. You just have to kind of get lucky that you you're in the move that sticks. Yeah, and they had so the three guys that went away had they each had a teammate in that group of four or five behind. So the, obviously those teammates 
are not going to do anything. So I think there's only two guys in that group that didn't have teammates, and they're not going to put it all on the line to chase them down because they know they're going to get attacked. So they're, it's yeah, a total they were, lottery, and uh, you know those guys won the won the lottery. Obviously, they they worked hard to be in that breakaway, but those last 20 kilometers is just it's a chess game, and it just becomes super stressful. And um, you know they got lucky, so to speak, to get away from that group. So if, if it's a small break like that, seven eight guys, and they're organized working together. I mean, what are the teammates saying to each other? They're, they're like, you're probably communicating on how they feel, when to go, when you're going to go, I'll stay, you go, are you fresh? Or, or, what do they well, say the, to each other? And the directors are in their in their ear as well, and their directors are obviously saying there was a uh, Meridia guy in there, there was a truck secretary in Astana, and they both had teammates. So obviously they're saying you can't let one or the other go without us. So they were marking each other, and they just they went away perfectly. Now that you bring that up, because I just and I just wrote this down on my notes here, fellas. Uh, my patron of the day, right? Since this show is brought to you by Patron Tequila, my patron of the day uh, is is Michael Valgren. Mm. I mean, this is a kid who's a bike racer. I mean, he he just races and he wins a lot. Um, and for him to sit back there and be the consummate teammate, I mean, he's probably sitting there going, "Shit, I missed it. I missed the lot. I mean, I just didn't go at the right time. Or it was his turn." But he's just sitting back there, uh, um, you know, knowing that yeah. he wasn't going to win. I, I would and, guess and neutralizing the group. Yeah. To me, that's that's a that's a patron a patron move. Exactly. With the power that he has, he he probably could have definitely bridged across to that breakaway. But he would have brought a, brought you know another one or two guys along and minimized their chances of winning the stage. So he put it all on the line for the team today. So chap, chapeau to him. As you guys pointed out yesterday, and we saw it again today, there's there's sort of two races going on. There's mm-hmm. the guys trying to get a stage win that are down really far overall. And then there's the GC guys checking each other. No, th- no, they're not. What are they doing? Then? All they're doing, they're doing one thing, trying not to crash. They're not, there's no checking nothing. Today. Well, Daniel Martin tried to go. That was the pointless. The, the other, we agree. The other race, For which, which, yeah, no, we, we definitely agree. That was pointless. And but just don't sure hit the why deck. Did they that. just don't want to hit the ground. We're not sure why I did that, but you saw three Movistar guys in the breakaway, which in my mind means like they've already given up the GC uh, for the win. They're going for a stage. We're gonna get the. We're gonna try to get podium, and we're gonna definitely try to win the team GC. But, but look at the history of that. We we don't talk a lot. We don't talk at all on this show about the team classification, but for for the sport and this event, and for some of these teams, it is a very big deal. Look at the history. If we could go look at the history of the winners of the Team GC and the Tour de France over the last 30 years. Keep in mind, this is an organization that went from Benesto to Ilias Bayares mm-hmm. to Movistar. The, the structure of this team has been around for a long time. They always want to win the Team GC. So that, yeah. what you, I mean, they gained, if you have three guys in a group that's 13 minutes up. Yeah, in fact, we went head gained, to, uh, you know, with, we went head to head with them one year um i think it was 2005 and it was it's a day like today super stressful because you you're not only watching like if there's a dangerous guy in the gc going up the road you're watching okay how many guys do they have in the breakaway and how many guys do we have and who's there so there's just so many things going on uh that that fortunately with a good director he can keep you um keep you informed as the race is going but there's a lot of a lot of different races going on you know prior to this uh, race starting stage one. I think Lance, you predicted that uh, it would be decided by this point, going into the second rest day. That th- the overall would be decided. Yeah, you just thought it would be I'm, pretty. I'm so touched and honored that you pay attention to everything I say. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, know it, that I said that w- on the preview show in Santa Fe with our friends from outside. I said that that it would be decided going into the final time trial. That we didn't even need. We didn't need to talk about the time trial. Right. So, but I, I, if I can, I would like to retract that statement, please. Because <laughs> okay. I think... Well, the reason I bring that I, up... I really wish I hadn't said that. It's okay. It uh, changes. This is too close. It's, it's a hard and, sport and it to would be And it would be a lot closer. If, and I'm watching this because I'm just seeing this coming. And if this happens, then that final time trial would have been uh, really decisive. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, just keep in mind... Uh, I believe it was on stage six, Tom Dimelin flatted with seven or eight kilometers to go. It was an uphill finish. Loses 53 seconds on his own. Was riding behind the team car. They dock him another 20, so there's 113. Mm-hmm. That, w- I'm going to keep talking about this because he's, he's getting stronger and stronger. He's looking better and better. 
Man, a minute 13 seconds is a long time. And if that is if that's what decides the tour, if he loses the tour by a minute because of a penalty. Man, no, but well because of the flat slash penalty. Right. It was really the flat just a, a inopportune time or unfortunate time. That's yeah, that's cruel. Yeah, agreed. That would be rough. <laughs> we agree about everything today. <laughs> this is amazing. Wait till we get to the part about how we're rubbing taints. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. Not yet. Not yet because uh we, uh, you'd like, <laughs> I know it's hard to talk after somebody talks about Rub and Tain. I know it does stun you a little bit. Um, rest days are a big deal. You talk quite a bit about how that throws you off. These guys are on, like Dumoulin. If he's coming into form, he probably doesn't want a rest day, right? Guys are hurting, he's coming together. You didn't like rest days, you've been very vocal about yeah, that. Everybody handles them well, everybody goes about their rest day differently. Um, this one is, is, is different than the first one because there's no travel associated. So they're going to drive to their hotel tonight and they're just going to stay there. So they wake up tomorrow and they're done. And Yeah, 99.9% um, <clears throat> of the riders are very much so looking for that rest day. <laughs> Only the mental freaks like the person sitting across from you would not be happy about a rest day coming. Just because it's fun to relive, what, what would Lance have been doing to the team on rest day two? hammering their asses <laughs> yeah trying to find a like at dinner already talking about what climb can we do tomorrow i'm gonna be like seriously why would you want to do a freaking climb when we need a we need a rest day but uh yeah i would that, that wouldn't be happy about it, him picking the route for the rest day ride i try to not pay attention and just figure it out uh, what it could be one of these things where it's like you know you're trying to recruit a guy like you're, you're gonna pay him this and it's a lot of money and you're gonna you know the team is strong and you know then somebody whispers in his ears like yeah man but if you go do the tour with lance do those rest days? And the guy's like, ah, fuck it, I'm not going. <laughs> well, even if you go out and hammer they, it for a little bit. They hated bit, me. I mean, what were we talking, a couple hours? Yeah, a couple a hours. A couple hours. Yeah. What else will the guys do on a rest day? I mean, you really just hole up uh, in a hotel? Yeah, well, yeah. sometimes family comes visit, um, but you try to do as little as possible. You eat good, you know, good, good meals. It's basically the, the two times, um, the two rest days in Tour de France is the only time you can have lunch in the Tour de France and normal lunch because the rest of the time you're on the bike, so... You have a nice lunch and uh, sometimes visit with family. Watch Clearly, the Christian Vandeveld's wife visited him once on a rest day <laughs> in the Tour of Italy. Yes. Right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah, do you actually sit down to a table or do they just throw a musette at you in the hotel? <laughs> <laughs> no, you sit down. <laughs> Definitely sit down. Yeah. I, I will say this, and I, and I was not, I don't love rest days, but mentally they're, they're nice. You don't have to, you don't have to stress about getting to the race and dealing with the public and signing in and blah, blah, blah. It's do just, the no, uh, it's, it's a it is a break. But the 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 Jersey leaders will do press, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, typically the um, yeah, it'll be interesting tomorrow. Garen Thomas and Chris Room, I'm assuming, will both do a press conference. Probably do it together. Yeah, some of the teams call their own press conference, even if they don't really. They're not leading just to. Keep and the other in the thing, media. the other thing that happens um, when, at least I believe this usually happens, is that if there's any announcement. Whether it's a new sponsor or the, the the industry uses the rest days as days where they can talk about the stuff that they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. they, For next season, yeah. If, if if or if somebody was creating a new team, they would announce it on the rest day. And so, you know, obviously, it's there's less noise, there's no race, there's no action. So that's a perfect day to to get your message out. And all the media is there. Yeah. Um, you since you brought up Froome and Thomas, I I think you guys were watching a different feed than I was, but they. Robbie and and Matt were were talking quite a bit about the placement of the second the backup bikes mm -hmm. on the team car, and the significance of it because they kept even though Thomas has been in the lead they kept putting Froome's bike first mm -hmm. because he was the guy that has since switched. Maybe Sky's just messing with people or I don't know how what a hard rule that is you or just if have it is one on each side. I'm, I'm never. Yeah, that I'm not sure. I was. They, they, my they were, was. Yeah, they were reading into it that maybe you know they've kind of shifted their attention to Thomas. I just I wanted to see what I you guys thought about that. Like I said so. yesterday, they're saying all the right things, doing yeah. all the right things. No, Josh, I wouldn't put, put too much on them changing the bike position. Um, it's not that big of a deal. No. Mm. All right, now Lance. I never knew. Even, I never even knew where Lance's bike was or where my bike was. I, I know exactly on the where car. my bike was. My bike was A one, bro. A one. <laughs> Come on. So on the left side of the car or on the right side? I of don't the car? know, but I know it was A one. So you don't right. know where it was. Whatever. Well, because you'd think it'd be on. The, I just know it was A one. I don't need to know where it is. So the mechanic, mechanic is on the right side of the back of the car, so you'd so think it'd right. be on. You'd think you would think, but 
you know, the car's pulling. So I don't know. That's why I'm asking him. He's, I clearly said he knew where it was, but he doesn't really know where it was. <laughs> I know it was A1. That's, that's all I know. All right. F- forgive us for the conversation we're about to I know, have. But, but, and, but apparently... And, and the little last bit of business okay. before we get to, to the... Uh, a really, really uncomfortable thing to talk about, but uh, this show today is also brought to you by PowerDot. I talk about it every day. I love this brand. I love this company. They are growing and blowing. Um, the most mobile e unit, really in the world, uh, powered by your phone, a Bluetooth uh, enabled. Uh, you can have all these, all these different settings. It's been about a week since we put it on George's back and had a little fun with him over here because I got to run the controls, but um, love the company so much. I actually invested in it. I don't know if that's an endorsement or disclaimer, but it's true. Um, they're giving away one unit per day to all our listeners. Just go sign up at powerdot.com slash the move. And if you want to purchase one there, you get 25% off to our listeners. Powerdot.com slash the move. All right, forgive us, but apparently on the uh, main NBC feed, they did a story about the Sky Bus. Yeah. That, that got something you hadn't seen before. Yeah, and I think, I mean, for the... I don't know if you listeners or viewers of the tour think about this, but you know you have to imagine that the tour is is essentially just a circus that moves around the country of France for three weeks. So everything is contained within this caravan of of gypsies rolling around the country. So whether it's food or or or, or mechanics or even laundry, right? And so in the very very old days, back when we used to race, <laughs> we we um, the riders did their laundry themselves. They would do it. The old the, old the days, swan, yeah. This is very old days. Swaniers would, they had like powder detergent and we would do it in the sink and just hang your stuff up. In the well, you, ha- you, you stick it in a towel and you roll up the towel as tight as you can and then step all over the towel that dry, that sucks out a lot of the water mm-hmm. and then hang it up and then it was dry the next morning. I still do that on, ca- on occasion at hotels when for I'm sure, traveling. <laughs> for sure. Because you don't carry much stuff. You travel yeah. light. Yeah. You, look, you're the man. <laughs> um, and then it got to this era where the, where the Swaniers were doing the laundry in the team but in the mechanics truck the front of the truck and and for as long as i can remember we only had one washing unit and then maybe at some point we had twos nbc did a really interesting thing today uh where they showed the sky laundry room they have six washing machines of course they do i mean well with 45 million dollars <laughs> i'm surprised you don't have nine but they had six separate washing machines and they have gone to the length and this is just this is what they do and i and i respect the shit out of this they proved in the Tour of Italy that by n- never washing any rider's clothes together, there's never any contamination, and not once in three weeks with, with eight or nine riders, I forget how many on the Giro, not one guy got a saddle sore. And so, you know, saddle sores for us in the day was a huge problem. But now that I realize when we're all washing our stuff together, like George and I, <laughs> I mean, there was some... We're sitting on the couch watching this together, and we just all of a sudden started looking at each other like, wait a second, we <laughs> shared... Taint what? contamination for it was, seven years straight. There was kind of nasty, bro. There was some taint and tween funk <laughs> between us. And, and Super awkward. I almost, I almost got up and left. I just went home. I felt really awkward. <laughs> but it's, it, you know, we, you guys we truly are bonded brothers, right? We, yeah. <laughs> we we laugh about it now, but it, you get a if you get a really bad saddle sore in the middle of the tour, it, it is on a day like today where the roads are very rough and just never smooth. Which you did during uh, one of your tours, all did the you time. not? I mean, really? It makes it very uncomfortable. This leads to, then you sit on the bike differently, sit on the seat differently. Uh, then, you know, as you're sitting mm-hmm. differently, the low back gets to, it just, it has a ripple effect that you just don't think about. I mean, I'm going all the way back to having six washing machines, which I, they, I think they even had like a laundry dude. That's all he did. He was like the laundry guy. Yeah, you don't, I mean, it's a very awkward topic, <laughs> but at times you get little cuts in there as well, which remember we used to do the Roubaix stages? And you'd get little little cuts that do not go away, and that is probably the worst pain you can have uh. on a bicycle. Um, so. But, so this is a testament to good teamwork. Like somebody did the science of. You talk, well, they're you leading, talk about they're the leading the way in, in every possible aspect. And somebody in somewhere they, said they've well, got every detail covered. Yeah, how do we prevent getting saddle sores? And somebody put two and two together and said if we wash everything separately i mean it's just little things like yeah. in your area you guys did a lot of th- little things that others weren't doing did you see anything else on the bus that caught your eye or oh, yeah, no. that it was different from back in the day oh no all they showed was the laundry room yeah that's just that showed. did the story on that one thing yeah. and what they're doing yeah interesting yeah w- whatever it takes right um let's take just a second to talk about 
we just touched on the rest day briefly, um, but you know now after this rest day, before we talk about the action that will we'll resume Tuesday and Wednesday, um, my rest day, our rest day, tonight we're flying to Denison, Iowa. For you loyal listeners, you know you know how much I love Ragbri. I love this is the largest annual multi-day bike ride. It's like thirty thousand riders a day across the state of Iowa. And for those of you who don't know, RAGBRAI stands for the Register's Annual Great Bike Ride Across Iowa. So I think, I, I don't know how many, it could be a good quiz for the listeners. I don't know how many I've done, but this must be seven or eight for me. So and who are you taking out, with you? Uh, flying, taking Anna and my daughter Grace. Uh, tomorrow's ride is 70 miles, hilly for Iowa. Um, hot, humid. So Grace, we're, you know, we're wishing her the best. She's never ridden 70 miles. So we're going to go over there and ride, and then we'll fly straight back, and we'll be here for... What advice Start are you going to give to her to knock out 70 miles? So, so for anybody that's been to Ragbri, you know what? I mean, this is, this is fucking nuts. This is like Lollapalooza on a bike. People stop. They drink. They eat pork chops, <laughs> corn on the cob, pies. It's, it's insanity. Midwest so my, comfort food. My advice is for Grace is to do none of that <laughs> <laughs> other than stop. We'll stop, have a Gatorade or a water, whatever, and we're not having any pies or any pork. That's my advice. I, I noticed she was riding a lot with Anna yeah. getting ready for that. Yeah, she's, she's, she's. George, what are you going to do on the rest day? I'm You've got doing, family. I'm here. doing a uh, little fundraiser for the Aspen Valley Ski Club. Ooh. So I'm doing, I think, a 60 mile ride Pam, as well. Pam, rope you into that? Pam Alexander <laughs> rope yep. me in. And, uh, <laughs> Pam. Uh, gotten a lot of nice messages of support for supporting the local ski club. So I'm excited to be part of it. And by the way, if you're a member, uh, in the archives, in the member portal, we had a happy hour last night, so we can talk in real time to people in different parts of the world. Um, and you guys brought Anna and Melanie in. Yeah, so that was the highlight. That was yeah. it. Was yeah. really fun. There's some fun stuff, and cl- and we found out George is quite the the fashionista <laughs> at picking out stuff for her. Yeah, yeah. That was, and then Lance a- shared some uh, some of his fashion from 1989 so embarrassing. it was awesome but that's a couple photos as well which you, i found quite interesting well, you, you can, can see google it, anything now <laughs> you can see that at, at we do dot team we're talking about remember. stage 16 yeah and the weather well the weather could be a part of it um you know you guys know i love uh looking at the weather but um you know to me it's an ideal stage for coming off a rest day there's a huge run in while it's not completely flat they're two cat fours the boys have about 80 or 90 miles before they actually start climbing when they go up the uh, Col de Porte d'Aspe and then go down it, uh, which for those of you longtime uh, fans of the sport and maybe fans of mine, you'll remember that tragically in 1995, uh, our teammate Fabio Casartelli lost his life on that descent. Um, little known fact, uh, that was a nine-man team. The first alternate that year was Mr. George Hincapi. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what were you? how old were you at the time? I was uh, 20... 21. Yeah. So the, the day before the tour started, Oach just said, you know what? You're too young. We're going to put Cosratelli in. Yeah. So the race will pass. They, they built a beautiful memorial to, to Fabio on the, on the, close to where he passed. He, was, he died in a place where you couldn't actually build a memorial, so it's about a kilometer up the mm-hmm. road. Uh, so we were, we were curious if every year, most, most, most of the years, the family's there. So hopefully they'll be out tomorrow. Yeah. I know a lot of the, the, the magazines, if you want to Google it, have done some pieces about it. Updates with mm-hmm. his, uh, his, his wife and his son was an infant his when that happened. son was yeah. months old. A newborn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's some good stories out about it that, uh, that you, you might enjoy. Yeah. But in a weird way, that sounds terrible. You know, that to say that enjoy, makes it, a, for me personally, and I, for George as well, it makes it a very special day. But uh, for these guys, I, I, I don't. I think we'll see some action. I mean, I, I, to me, it all comes down to if the projected thunderstorms become a reality. Anytime you have thunderstorms slash rain with a downhill finish, well, you just wonder, you know, what happens and who will take that risk. Will, a, who will take the risk that, that it either works for them or works against them, as we saw, as you see all the time. Mm-hmm. So Oz just wrote, and he said probably the parents will still be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, I'm sure he'll probably stop and say hi because he'll be in the car. Yeah. An, another update on an ongoing thing is, uh, I know you checked in with MJ's, the Lawson Craddock tea is still selling like crazy. So 
I, want, I just want to give a shout out to my uh, my crew at Mellow Johnny's in Austin, and and just just to be totally honest, I do nothing at that bike shop. So if you want to show up and think that I'm selling you a bike, <laughs> I'm not. Um, and I only say that just because I love the staff so much. They're the it's the coolest bike shop in the world, but we also have the best staff. And 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 my belief is, look, this T-shirt wasn't my idea. This was the staff's idea of the shop, not just you know the whole crew, but you know Will Black, Todd Church, Dave Ryder. Um, on and on and on. Um, and so they, they made this shirt. All proceeds go to Lawson's effort. We sold 1,500 of these T-shirts. <laughs> 15 amazing. bucks, and I think it's about 15 bucks per T-shirt to his cause, which doing the math is $22,500 from a little bike shop in Austin, Texas. I think that's amazing. That's great. And, and then that, that must make Lawson's effort up to about 120000 At least, yeah, to, to rebuild this velodrome in Houston destroyed yeah. by Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. So, yeah. have, are you are you communicating with Lawson while he's? I have not. I've only met him a couple of times. In the connection, he yeah, that's he, like he the spends... only guy that will talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> him, TJ, <laughs> George is so nice. Everybody likes to talk to George. That's true. I'm going to text George right now. <laughs> and they're at the dinner table with the tour. People are like, "Wow, that's cool." But did, I did. Also, just like, I'm going to a... text Lance right now. And they're like, "Ooh, really? <laughs> Shit! Watch out, dude. Be careful." <laughs> Philippe Gilbert just wrote in and confirmed that this front, the start of the stage was incredibly hard and fast, and then he said that after that it was pretty pretty chill. Headwind coming in. So for the guys who were not in the breakaway and in the bunch, they had a relatively easy day. Are <clears throat> right, you guys want to field some questions, nope, comments? Nope, yes. Nope. Yes. I got one thing I'm fixing to get off. Oh, get the all art, mad There's about. an article that got you lathered up. Please explain. So I see on, this was above my head. This is I see on and this I talk about it every day. I talk about the structure of the sport. I talk about the two faced nature of the sport. Um, I'm not trying to put myself into that discussion. I'm just um, lobbying an opinion about this. I see this headline on Cycling News. Mark Matteo, the owner and director of of the French team Francaise de Joux, otherwise known as FDJ, uh, says cycling and the Tour de France have a credibility problem. And then he goes on to say, why doesn't Sky join the MPCC, which is this yet another bureaucratic organization called the Mouvement pour Cyclisme, I don't know what the the other C is for. Um, And and this coming from a guy who, during his career, admitted to taking amphetamines and cortisone and no telling what else. As far as I know, Mark Matty, I mean, he'd take everything but the kitchen sink. So to sit here and say, how can you say that? And then you go fast forward to the MPCC, this, this spinoff organization run by Roger Liget, longtime team director, had, had Zed and Gone and Credit Agricole, also tested positive in his career. Guys, we have to stop. The, the, the last thing we need is another organization, right? My point is, how about we have less organizations, right? This is not, you can't, A, how can Matteo say that? That's not his, you, when you have the history you have, you can't say that. And then these other organizations, A, you get no credit for being in the MPCC, and B, according to, as we see right here, you get shit for not being in it. And see, so, the amount of money you have to put into the anti-doping effort is already hundreds of thousands of dollars for each team. Guys, stop. I mean, at some point, you got to stop. Mm-hmm. It, it, it doesn't work, and it's not working. Stop. Stop chasing your tail. I'm done. On a much lighter note. <laughs> I'm done. On a much lighter note. With that. Since we talked about the laundry thing, which turned out to be kind of a, an interesting story, uh, Mark writes and asks about the, the bike prep. I'm curious how many mechanics there are per team. Uh, what happens to clean, tune, set? Obviously, having a mechanical is a big deal. There are probably too many details to mention, but I'm guessing the mechanics are on point at the end of the stage, NASCAR style. On and on. Talk about the mechanics in that role a little bit. Lance would have his own <laughs> mechanic, so he'd have one mechanic for himself, and then uh, I think each you'd have probably about four mechanics. Um, so each guy would have two bikes usually at the Tour de France, and yeah, they they you don't touch your bike. You you the only time you're on your bike is when you're racing it. And as soon as you cross the line, they take it from you, get it all cleaned up, dialed in, adjusted. The night before, um, you get an, we would get emails asking what gear we wanted for the next day. <coughs> so they would change the cassettes out, what wheels we wanted for the next day. How do you guys, I mean, how does you, your individual or team, I mean, how do you find those people and 
I mean, how's that? What's that process like? They're, they're like riders. I mean, there's good no. mechanics and bad mechanics. No. There's good like, swingers I'm, and bad swingers. So I'm, you can poach them or recruit them or um, st- steal them from other teams, or they can go to other teams. And so they're highly sought after. I'm, I'm picturing like a, like a crusty old trusted legendary Belgian guy is the the one you want, right? Oh, yeah, we we had Julian De Vries, who no. was who was you said it all. Crusty and old, <laughs> but he's a sweetheart. Um, but if Lance and I went back today into the Tour de France Peloton, we'd see pretty much the same guys we saw when we first started racing. Um, those guys stick around for a long time, obviously a lot longer than the, the riders. Do you, have you noticed it with the addition of disc brakes, if it's causing any more mechanical issues or wheel change issues, or has that been a non-factor? Because you were very adamant last year that you got to get disc brakes in there. Yep. It's time to change. Uh, well, you need disc brakes only. And the reason I really am a fan of disc brakes is is in light of what it would do for the industry. If the entire peloton rode disc brakes, and all of us regular everyday cyclists with old school brakes would go, "Oh my god, I got to have it. My my shit's janky. Like I got to get the new stuff." And so you'd have an entire turnover 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 for the industry. And so, but you know what? You can also get that. I mean, we're going to see that with e-bikes. So whether it's disc brakes or e-bikes, it's these things that. That are going to allow the uh, uh, the industry to just you know. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a lot of the e bike here in yeah. Colorado and locals just blazing up past me on yeah. these climbs. We got, we got past the other day going up the bells. But if they're getting passes. out, they're getting out where they might not have. Exactly. Before, we're right? fans. We're yeah. fans. I'm but, not anti e bike at all. And then the disc brake would come into play on a day like you described Tuesday. The only a, day a, well, wet, I mean, that, if it's a wet descent, right? That would be highly advantageous on a wet descent. Yep. Highly advantageous. You know, cork pads and carbon rims do not break in the rain. It's be, time release. Be interesting to see the breakdown now of the Tour de France Peloton. How many guys are on disc and how much? How many guys are on regular brakes? Well, you're the one who talks to everybody in the peloton. Why don't you ask right, them? We'll find out for Tuesday. We'll, we'll <laughs> you try got to the get main that line. What the hell? I mean, start. And by the way, where's my Julian I, Alaphilippe video of him I, walking on his hands? I know in this room it's fifty-fifty. He's. I've asked every day. Where, can you just I'm get the video breaks. of him walking on his hands? Brian Holmes said that Maybe Julian the Alaphilippe. For the rest of the rest of it. It. Okay. he can walk on his hands like who doesn't want to see that video i want to see it the polka dot jersey and i want him wearing the polka dot jersey <laughs> while he walks on his hands i don't know if i can pull that one off but we'll we'll try our okay. best i'll take it here's a fun email from steve in templeton california uh, i think you should name johan's segment wait till dad gets home lance and, Jar- and george argue about something it's just like when my brother and I were kids and, and we were being difficult. Mom would say, just wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> dad would come home from work and set shit straight, just like Johan does. Uh, and what dad There's, said stood, just like Johan. Yeah. So generally just we can do that, but let me just preview what's going to happen. George is right most of the time, but Johan likes me more. <laughs> so, go figure. Uh Mike in Denver writes, is the 50 happening? The 50 is happening. Yes, it's happening. It's happening. It is? Yep. <laughs> Dude, don't start with me. We changed the day so that okay, you yeah, could yeah, be I'm here. In. That's right. That's right. I'm in. September the 15th, George Hinkapi on the start line. It's always been on a Sunday, and we had to move it to Saturday because Big Time here has yet another event. He's got a jet off to <laughs> cash a check. So, yes, it's, sa- it's Saturday, okay. September the 15th, Mike and George. And one last message. I know you guys got a busy day ahead uh, with yeah. your travel. We're going to Denison. Now. Never been to, well, I probably have been to Denison, Iowa. But Caleb writes, uh, my wife recently was declared cancer-free from the doc. We went through a ton uh, the, the last many months. If there's a possibility, Lance could give a shout-out to Janelle Dietrich for beating her cancer. That would be phenomenal. Janelle, we love you. We're thinking about you. And uh, happy to talk about you. Give a shout-out on the move. Continued success and good health. Cool. Quick reminder, too, as we wrap this up, if you want to see the happy hour from last night, it was a lot of fun with your spouses in here. Anna and Melanie were great. That's in the member area at wedo.team. Send any questions or comments to the move at wedo.team. Yep.